Hello and finally welcome back to the shop. So this is my first video of the new year. I know it's been a couple of weeks. Hope all you guys had a good holiday. Um, it's been kind of crazy around here lately. Temperature in New England has pretty much been single digits and below zero for a couple of weeks straight. Which is kind of unusual for this area. I mean we usually in the, in the, you know, we drop to the teens in the night in the 20s and during the day. It's kind of normal. But to have and with the cold snaps of like of single digits in that, but to have this amount of time in single digits and below zero, and we had wind chills of like negative 25, and it was, it's been crazy. Uh, and then all of a sudden, last week we had a couple of 50 degree days, and in between those, you throw in 14, 14 inches of snow and a blizzard. So, you know, welcome to New England. <laughs> so, needless to say, I, it's been wreaking havoc on units at work. And, We've just been out straight, so I really haven't had a whole lot of time to get into the shop. Usually I've had stuff to do on the weekends, and you know, you get home from a long day of work, you, especially in those temperatures, you kind of just want to sit down and have something warm, have something nice and hot to drink, and just sit down and relax. So, But today, what we're going to do is we're going to make the back plate for that four-jaw chuck so we can actually get the 13-inch running and we can actually use that. So I have a piece of cast iron that was generously donated to me by one of my viewers. Thank you again. And what we're going to do is we are going to face one side, board, and thread it on the 9-inch lathe. And we're kind of pushing the limits of that lathe. And then we can screw it to the 13-inch and do the rest of the machining on the 13-inch. So it's a relatively straightforward project. A lot of people have made videos of this, so I'm not going to go into huge detail with it. Very straightforward. Uh, board, thread, and then machine. So if you guys want to skip ahead to this time right up here, that skips all of the 9 inch lathe and you get, get to see the 13 inch make some cuts on the cast iron. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the video and thank all you guys for uh, the likes and the subscribes and don't forget to tell your friends, come join the channel. Okay, so we're going to begin our process of turning this into this. So this is the back plate of the chuck, it's inch and a half by eight and this boss on it is not big enough for me to bore out to an inch and seven eighths uh, that I need for my lathe. So we're going to start off with this piece. This, this piece of cast iron was generously donated to me by one of my viewers. Uh, I only need a four inch diameter. That's what the south side register is. And this is six inch, so we're going to have a couple inches to come off when we get it into the other lathe. Um, so what we're going to do is on this lathe is we are going to face this, this side. We're going to drill, bore, in thread and then cut the register in. This side here will then become the back of the back plate here. Then we can mount the plate onto the chuck of the 13 inch and we can then machine the outside and then also face the front. That'll make sure that any kind of run out or anything in the spindle or any other idiosyncrasies of that lathe itself everything that this face will be flat and this face will be parallel with that particular lathe. It's a good idea whenever you get a new lathe, a new chuck for your lathe, just take a skim off this inside face here uh, of the back plate of whatever chuck while you have it mounted. Again, that takes out any kind of idiosyncrasies that each lathe may have between each other and true it up for your, your machine. So let's go ahead and start getting this. Now we are kind of pushing the limits of travel on this machine. So I've had to pan you down just a hair. I've had to kind of back out the cross slide here longer than I would normally have it to be able to clear the outside edge of this piece. To make up for having this much stick out, I just tightened down all the gibs to lock that in place. So all we need to do right now is just give this a facing cut. Get you back up.
give this a speed up. Okay, after a couple facing cuts, got a nice flat surface in there. Uh, now we just got to put a hole in there to stop my boring. The largest drill bit I have is one inch, so that's what we're going to go up to in three steps. So. Okay. We got ourselves a one inch hole in there now, and uh, we're ready to bore it. Okay, so unfortunately to be able to, uh, zoom you back just a hair if you can see, to be able to clear this, the edge of the carriage right where my finger is, uh, you know, that hits the, the, the face plate. So unfortunately I have to have the boring bar out a little bit further than normal. But that just means I may have to take a couple of spring passes uh, to get it perfectly straight. Other than that, we need to bring this out to, uh, was it one inch? Have it written down over here? One inch, 725 thousandths. That's what I made the test piece at, and that fit beautifully. So that's what we're going to bore this hole up to. Okay, so we have our hole in there, got a little chamfer on the end. Now we just need to set up a boring bar. I have the length set so that I have the full bit uh, on the other side of the part when I can disengage. And I also made sure to give myself at least an eighth of an inch, uh, actually more like, yeah, about a little over an eighth of an inch or so of clearance between this carriage and the face here before we hit. So now we have to set this 60 degree threading tool up to the correct orientation to the pot, which obviously is perpendicular to it. Now this is a hand ground bit, so that 60, although the point is 60 degrees, it could be slightly skewed on that tool bit, which would make this bar a little bit uh, canted one way or the other from your perspective. Now if you had something like a internal, you know, a carbide tool or something that you could get on the tool and cutter grinder where that's perfectly centered then you can just center up your tool block but we can't do that so we have to actually read this 60 degree point to do that we just use our little um, threading gauge here and we put it against our nice faced edge here and with the tool post slightly loose we just fit You just fit that 60 degree angle in there and push on the gauge here, a little too tight, push on the gauge and you can see I can move it and fit that tool bit perfectly in that 60 degree notch. Okay, so I got some bluing in there so hopefully you can see the threading taking place. I'm in back here, I'm going to be going at a relatively slow pace because 8 threads per inch, this, is, this carriage is going to advance pretty fast and I don't want to risk running my carriage into my part. So we're just going to take it slow and easy and start from there. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this tool bit close to where I want to be. Right about there and I'm just getting the cross slide handle into an, a comfortable position. And from there we can use our compound to come in and touch. So let's go ahead and do that. Shouldn't take very much. All right, there's our touch right there. So I'm gonna zero out the compound. 
and what we're going to do is double check and make sure we're in eight threads per inch and at that setting right there we're going to engage our half nuts here and just make a quick little pass we can verify that I'm at eight threads per inch. Okay, looks good to me. So we can start from there and go down to our depth. And we can use, if you look at your threading gauge here, eight threads per inch, where are we right there? Eight threads per inch, right there, of the let me see if I can get a shadow on there. I don't know if you can read that or not, but it says 144, I'm sorry, 162 thousandths is what it says. So we can use that as a base. I know what I have my depth at for the other thread for the test piece that I made, so I'm going to go right into that, that depth. Okay, let's get going. Okay, I'm getting pretty close. Uh, since I have the capability to be able to take this chuck off and test it on the other lathe, I'm going to do that and just make sure everything is okay. Um, definitely looks like I need to do a little bit more, maybe about 10 or 15 thousandths. And judging by my um, measurements or my tracking, we should be right there. Okay, so my threads fit fine. I just tested it. And uh, now we need to do the register, which is 1 inch, 8 85 on my lane, so that helps if you okay. So touch off there. enough for the register and I'm gonna set my little carriage stop at zero right there where we're at one inch eight thirty
pretty close to one inch 870 right about there. One inch 875 according to my calipers. It's kind of just about where we want to be Okay, just take a uh, little wire brush here. confident that that will fit so let's switch over to the big lathe okay so we're ready to mount our plate here a little bit of oil here this is the side that we faced on the 9 inch that's gonna go right to there and we got a, a tiny tiniest bit of movement which is fine because it's going to draw up on that register and go right up against that flat face and there we're locked in place. So now we need to take this diameter, well first we need to face this off. Now I could take some of the bulk of this off also. I have uh, approximately, looks like a maybe a half an inch, a little over half an inch. Yeah I could take I could take about a quarter of an inch off of this face if I want to. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. We have a lot of bulk here. Um, just thinking of whether I want to do that or not. I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. We'll decide on that in a moment, uh, whether I want to face that off. But what I want to do right now is I need to take this diameter, which is six inches, is going to go down to four and three quarters of an inch and then we can face the front of this. I'm gonna take the outside diameter down first and that'll give me less to face off on the front. So, just make sure everything clears. We shouldn't have an issue with this lathe.
Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and face this. Let's see what we gotta set at. I'm gonna slow this machine down a little bit here. We'll try this for now. Uh, set the feed rate. I just oiled everything up on this and uh, oiled the outside gear train, so it should be a lot quieter than the last time you heard it. I still haven't really mounted my control box, but... Okay, so you can see we're nice on the back here. Our back face is running nice and true. Our front's obviously wobbling like crazy. Okay, actually, I gotta tighten that belt because I never did. <laughs> so give me a second, I just gotta tighten that drive belt because I actually, I don't think I ever tightened it from when I rebuilt this machine. Okay, take two.
Okay. Just gonna check back here. Fifty on the nose. It's just slightly under over here. So I got a little bit of a taper in the part. That's just probably wear in the lathe itself. Uh, when we did our test bar, we had uh, one thousandths uh, over six inches. So um, this is like maybe a half a thou from here to here, if that. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is we'll face the front and we'll see if everything fits up nice as it should. Alright, so I'm going to face this off now. Now I have about, uh, I can take about, about about a half an inch off of that, the, the face. Uh, I haven't really decided what I want to do yet. I want to leave it like this for now and then just uh, maybe later on if I need to I can cut it back if I don't like it. Um, but right now I just want to take a facing cut on there, get a nice flat spot, and then we can fit up the chuck and make sure everything fits. So, let's go ahead and do that.
right, it's got the tiniest wisp of a saw cut left there, so I gotta face it again. But I can at least hold up the chuck and make sure everything fits. So. Oh, yeah. Fits on there nice. Okay. What I think I'm gonna do. What I think I'm gonna do. I don't want to take all that. I think I'm gonna take maybe a quarter of an inch off of this, so I'm gonna face it a little bit, and then you guys get to skip that. Okay, so now we're complete. I face this off. I got it to within about a quarter of an inch of the end of the spindle here. You can go all the way down to the end of the spindle and run it flush. That's perfectly fine. I like to keep it a little bit off just to give myself some wiggle room in case for whatever reason this has to be refaced again or if I get a new chuck I can adapt it to that or you know it just gives us a little bit more room to play with and um, it's not going to make the chuck any less stable having added that little quarter of an inch there. I also reduced this rear diameter here uh, it's by one inch to just reduce some of the weight and girth of the back plate. So now I can't get this off by hand because we've been machining on it. Uh, I got to run out to my van and get my strap wrench and take this off. And then we'll just mark and drill the, uh, the holes. Which actually I'm going to do off camera. It's very, very simple. I'm just going to put this up to the, the chuck and just center punch through with a, uh, with a transfer punch through the chuck holes and then we'll just drill and tap it. Now there's no reason to, to set up on the, on the drill press or the mill to do that with the camera. Um, you guys have all seen that. So I'm just gonna do that and when you next see this, we'll be 100%. Okay, this is our back plate. And I'm mount it to the chuck, then we can mount it to the lathe, and then we can see what kind of runout we get. And then I gotta spend another hour cleaning up all this garbage. Okay, we're mounted. Gonna see if this back plate repeats at zero. And it does. And this we're within a like a half a thou right there. Maybe maybe three quarter. So I can probably just bump it around a little bit and uh, I could have a piece of gunk in between these two mounting surfaces. Um, I did clean them out, but I'll clean them really good with, uh, I just wiped them down with, uh, with a rag. I'll clean it out real good with some solvent and then I'll put it back together again. But obviously we're good to go. And uh, our alignment isn't like super critical on this. It is a four jaw chuck, so we have, you know, four independent jaws. So we want to get it as close as we can. Um, but if we're off a little bit, you know, obviously we're going to be dialing things in anyway. So I'm happy with that. And uh, this job is done. This lathe is now usable. I'll take this off, put it back on a few times, just make sure I repeat my readings. And if I have to bump this to one side or the other, not a huge thing. But uh, happy with the way that turned out.